around, I am going to be making corn chowder with chilies for ONTV's cooking show. So with me, I've got um, two to three slices of bacon. It calls for two, but I use three. I'm not a big fan of bacon, but I think with this recipe, it works really well. We have one and a half onions. I have salt, heavy whipping cream, chicken broth, cornmeal, chipotles in adobo sauce, and diced green chilies, as well as butter and just some water. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna cook the bacon on the stove and we are going to get it like crisp and browned a little bit just so it can be cooked and we can use that um, bacon grease to cook with the onions and stuff. So I'm gonna turn it on medium heat and we are going to get this bacon going. And it might be a slow process because I think this burner took a while to heat up last time. <laughs> so I'm just going to spread it all out so they're kind of apart from each other so it cooks a little faster so they're not all clumped together. And I'm going to leave it for a few minutes. <laughs> and until the bacon is crisped up, I don't really have anything to do until we can add our onions. And after our onions saute for a few minutes, we are going to add our butter, and then we add all of the corn, and both peppers, and we'll get the ball rolling and it'll be great. ONTV encourages you to go back to school and attend our 10-week video production workshop. Classes meet on Monday nights from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. and offer instruction on studio production, field production, and nonlinear editing. The cost is $55 per person, and upon completion of the class, you get access to ONTV's facilities and equipment to produce your own program or short film. For more information, give ONTV a call at 248-393-1060 or visit orionontv.org today. Okay, so we are back, and now that our bacon has crisped up a little, we can see that it's just a little bit brown. So it's looking good. Now we're gonna pour all of our onions in. And they're not gonna stick to the pan because we're using all that bacon grease to keep it going. We're gonna mix that up. And we're just gonna have this go for about three to four minutes until they're kind of like softer, a little more green if I recall. I made this recipe last night um, in preparation for today, so I would know how it looks because I actually never made it before last night. And I just relied on my mom's wonderful cooking <laughs> to eat it every time. So, gotta get that practice in before you do the real, real deal. So I'm gonna let this go for a few minutes, but while I do that, I'm going to show you how to cut up the chipotles in adobo sauce. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna crack the can open and we only need two of these. And depending, woo, depending on the size, we're not gonna need more than that. But last night I ended up using about two and a half. So it's all dependent on like which kinds you get. So I'm just, I just keep this paper towel here because we're going to cut out the seeds. See, this is a good one. And this one looks pretty good too. So I'm just going to cut these in half so I can see all the insides. And then you just scrape out the little seeds. There's not too much in this half. But then same with this side. Cut it in half and just scrape the seeds out. And the seeds stick to the board. So... Just set that aside. Just <laughs> try to keep the seeds off your fingers as well. And then I'm going to do the same thing to the other one. This one, see, look at that. I'm going to scrape all those seeds out. I don't know why this is important. I don't know if this is the spice or if the green chilies are the spice. My mom was very unclear about that as well. 
But we're taking the seeds out just because I guess we don't want it to be crunchy. <laughs> and then this last one. These ones are hidden. Oh gosh. And then, like I said, keep a paper towel on hand so you can scrape off your knife, get all those seeds off, so you can go back in there. And there we go. Perfect. Okay. And then I'm just going to dice these as per the recipe's recommendation. So I'm just going to scrape all the seeds and the <laughs> juice, I guess, the adobo sauce. And then I'm just going to lay them on top of each other and just kind of slice. Oh, I missed quite a few seeds in this one. Oopsies. I'll just set that off. And then I'm going to check back on my onions. Make sure they don't burn. Beautiful. Looking good. Cool. And then we're going to keep dicing. They don't have to be too small, but you will get spoonfuls of these guys, and they're not spicy. So maybe it's the green chili. It's probably the green chilies that spice it up. But this soup is literally one of my favorite ones, or should I say chowder? It's my favorite soup slash chowder any time of the year, but usually around the colder months. Okay, those are looking great. So I am going to leave this here, wipe my hands off. <laughs> And then keep the onions going, and then we're going to put the corn in. Oh, actually, butter first, and then corn. Ew, it's all under my nails. Okay. Okay, these are looking good to go, and I'm gonna put the butter in and let the butter completely melt before I add all the corn. So all we need is two tablespoons, and I've already cut it, so just about this much. And we're just gonna plop that in the pan, if I can get it, and let it melt. I'm just gonna stir it around. And then this recipe calls for um, fresh, like, corn right off the cob and to be careful about, like, cutting it off. But I feel that is a lot of work. So we're just going to use frozen corn and it works just as well. I just let it sit for a teeny bit longer so it kind of melts and isn't frozen corn by the time you're adding all your liquids into it. So the butter is all mixed in. So now it's time to add all the corn. And we only need four cups. And this bag has five cups in it. So what I'm gonna do, I cut the top off and I'm going to just scoop out a cup and set it aside and then pour the rest of the bag into the pot. Sweet. And then we're just going to mix it around a little bit so it can start thawing and getting combined with all the onions and bacon. And we're going to let that sit for a second so it can do that. But let me tell you, it is already smelling so good. And I'm so excited. Okay. We're going to leave that for a second, and since we already have our um, chipotles and adobo sauce ready to go, we're going to take our chilies and the chipotle peppers, and actually we're going to start again because <laughs> it's all frozen, and maybe turn it up just a smidge. But it's all going to cook anyway, so the corn's going to heat up when we add everything in general. So it just says to stir it for one minute. 
to get everything good to go. And I'm impatient, so I'm going to add the chipotle chilies. Just the little, the two that we cut up. I'm gonna set that off to the side. And then we're gonna take our green chilies that are diced and just add the whole four ounce, four ounce can in there. Scoop it out. And then this is what gives the soup the distinct taste that it has and the smell. Looking and smelling wonderful. I love this soup. Okay. So, after we do that, we let it go, and then we're gonna add all the chicken broth. It calls for 32 ounces, which is four cups, and that is conveniently an entire thing of these cartons. And it calls for low sodium chicken broth, but you can use whatever you want. We just used um, bouillon like paste and made our own and it worked out just fine. And it wasn't even like actual chicken broth. It was like vegetarian chicken broth. So use whatever you got. I'm sure it would taste good with any kind. So I'm going to turn that up a little bit more. Since we still got that corn kind of cold and everything's room temp in there. And then we also add our salt and all we need is a half teaspoon. So I'm going to take a teaspoon and only fill it about halfway and sprinkle that in there. And then we also need our heavy cream in there. Sorry, I'm processing. <laughs> okay, so we just need a one and a half cups of heavy whipping cream, which seems like a lot, but this is one of the things that's gonna make it thicken up. Okay, so we're gonna put that along with the broth and the corn and it doesn't look very appealing at the moment. But you mix it up and you let it sit for a little bit and it gets better, I promise. Give it a mix, turn it up to high because I'm impatient again. And we just let that go for a while. And we wanna bring it up to a boil before we add our water and cornmeal mix to it. So, I will be right back to show you that. Have you ever thought of producing your own podcast? ONTV offers the facilities, equipment, and training to help you get your own podcast off the ground. Learn how to record your show and get it out to the world. Cost is $25 per person, which gives you access to ONTV's podcast room and equipment. For more information, give ONTV a call at 248-393-1060 or visit orionontv.org today. Okay, so we are back. I've cleaned up a bit, put all the cold stuff back in the fridge, and I put the corn back in the freezer that I wasn't using, but now our soup is boiling. So as soon as it comes to a boil, it says to bring it down to low. So that's what I'm gonna do. And then we are going to prepare our water and cornmeal mix. So I'm making sure that's on low. Okay, so I have a fourth cup of water here, and we are going to add three tablespoons of cornmeal or masa. I used masa at home last night and I didn't know what I was expecting, but it turned into a paste. So we'll see how this works. So I'm just gonna stir it around with a little spatula. 
See, and it doesn't turn into paste. So we'll see how much it thickens up. But I've heard cornmeal works wonders. So we're going to do that. And we are going to add it to our pot. And even on low and or simmer, it is still basically boiling. So it made a little bit of a paste at the bottom. Maybe I should have stirred it a little longer, but it's okay. And we are almost done here. We're going to mix this up. Make sure all the cornmeal paste in the water is combined in there. Look at that. How beautiful is that? I'm so excited for this soup. Okay. That is looking great. So what we are going to do is we are going to cover it and leave it. So just put that top on and get it as low as possible. What we learned at home was that if you have something lower than low, definitely do that because that is what is going to thicken it up and hopefully take less time for you to be able to eat it. So we're gonna leave that for 15 minutes and then we're gonna wrap it up. Okay, and we are back and the soup is good to go. It's more of a soup than a chowder, but it's good either way. If you wanna thicken it, maybe wait for the cornmeal to like actually make a paste. If you saw, I kinda poured in a little more water than the cornmeal mixture, so it's fine. But this is about what it looks like. So it's still kind of soupy, but it is a little thicker than usual soup. So we're just gonna scoop that into our bowl and it just looks immaculate. Oop. Beautiful. I'm gonna set this off to the side. Grab the paper towel, wipe that off. And we are done. Here is our corn chowder with chilies. I hope you enjoyed watching this segment today, and I hope you have a great day.